In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use flex containers in Dexterous to make some responsive card design layouts. So let me show you the kind of scenarios that flex is good for. You can see over here on the right, I've got a reference image here from Century Spice Road, one of my favorite games. And it has these icons down the bottom here. And you'll notice that there's a different amount of icons on different cards but they're still centered on each card. And that's a simple yet tricky design problem to solve. So how would we go about this in Dexterous? You can see over here, I've set up a simple card layout with a background picture, a number and three zones, A, B, C. And what has happened up until now is that people have been arranging these where they want them, but it's actually been quite hard to change their their position in a responsive way. So for example, let's say I didn't want B on a card. Let's simulate how that might look. I press this here and it's gone, which is good, but A and C don't snap together into the middle at all. So it's not actually responsive. So in this kind of situation, flex containers are the perfect solution. So to create that, it's a new kind of zone. I can click up here, create a flex container. So here I have this container and I'm just going to position it. Actually, I'll just leave it here just to show you what it does. If I drag A, B, and C into this flex container like this, you'll see that they lose their absolute position because they were just positioned like relative to this top corner, right? So now instead they are positioned in a special way inside this flex container. And you'll see that by default, they are horizontally appearing next to each other like this. Over here in this new tab here called container, you can see that this, this is a tab that's available for a flex zone. So if you click on a flex zone, you can go over here and you can see I'm arranging this kind of flow and it's left to right by default. But for example, I could change that to right to left and then we've got CBA, for example. So let me just change it back to left to right. And we have a few options over here in terms of the layout. I could align it to the left like that or to the right, to the top corner and so on. So I'm just wanting to have a center aligned look just like these century cards down here. I can, if I want, just create a little gap in them. Or if I don't want that gap, I can actually go to the X over here and I can say space between. So that just distributes them in the flex container with space in between them, or I could say space around. So that is trying to put an equal amount of space on each side there, if, you, if that makes sense. Or I can just go center and have my own custom gap, for example. So let me just bring this container down. So here we go. I've got this nice bottom look. I'm going to turn off the border here. So there's nothing. So my, my flex container is entirely transparent and it's doing its flex magic here but we can't even see it. So that's that's great, that's perfect. Now, let me show you what happens if I remove B. There we go. Not only do these two move in, but they also move together. They're centered in the middle here. So that lets you have a responsive card design really easily just with a flex container. Now let's have a look at a different design, maybe a vertical design. So I'll come over here and another one of my favorite games here is Splendor. And my, oh, my face has jumped down here. That's hilarious. So you can see that in Splendor, the icons are aligned to the bottom. This is the cost, but they stack on top of each other when there's more than one icon. So let's have a go, see if we can replicate that. So over here in the layout editor, I'm going to turn B back on. I'm going to go to my container settings over here, but instead of left to right, I want bottom to top. So bottom to top. Okay, so there we go. It's done that ABC like, the, like that. And I just need to give it a bit more room. Now you can see that by default here, it's trying to arrange them in the middle, but I actually want to go from the bottom. So I'm going to say bottom to top like that. And that's as simple as it is. So now if I remove B again, it'll just get rid of that and they'll stack nicely on top of each other. If I remove A, they'll just go down there like that. Now for something a little more complex. Let's say that you have an idea for a game and you want um, zones to grow or shrink based on the amount of text. So let's delete this. Let's say that you have, I'll get rid of this image here just to make it really clear. Let's say that you have an idea for a game 
and you want this text zone here to grow or shrink based on the amount of text in it. Let's say you have some cars that have heaps and heaps of text and um, you want this zone to grow like this and you have some cards that only have a tiny bit of text and in that case you want to see a background image behind it and you want to see that nice and big. So how would we go about this? Well, we would create another flex container. So let's create this flex container here. I'm going to put this text, the text name here, so I'll call it ability. I'm going to stick it straight in the flex container. So it's centered by default, which is good. But the height of this is still locked. So you can see here, if I put in lots of text, and then if I copy that a few times, so if I copy that, you'll see that what happens is the text overflows, which is not quite what I want. So what I need to do is come to the positioning of this zone, so this text zone, scroll down, and under height, I want to set the height to auto. And there we go. Now if I come back to the text, and if I grow, if I add more text here, you can see it's actually going to add more. Now, because of where the flex zone is positioned, you can see that the text is actually growing equally in both directions. It's trying to be centered. But let's say I wanted to keep the text be grounded to the bottom. So in that case, I'll put the flex zone here and I'll switch it from left to right to bottom to top again, but I'll align it to the bottom like that. Then we can see that if I come back to the text and if I delete, let's say if I delete half of this, there, it's this nice small zone. You can see the flex zone here, I'll turn that off. And if I add more, it grows bigger and bigger. And that's really cool. So what are some things to change here to make this even more complex? Let's turn off that border really quick. It's just so we can't see it there. The flex zone is doing its magic, but we don't want to see it. Let's say that I also wanted at the top of this text, I want three icons, let's say. So how might that look? Let's put these icons in. I'm just going to make them nice and smallish. I'll grab a default image here just so we can see how they look. I'll grab this uh, nice Ruby looking thing and I will copy that three times. One, two, three. Okay. And I'm going to whack these in. I'm going to put these inside my flex container here. But what is happening here? We can see that it's trying to stack them bottom to top and my icons here are trying to fit inside that, which is not really what I want. I want them spread out like this. So how do we solve this? We create another flex zone and this flex zone I'm going to put inside the other flex zone. So we've got flexes within flexes. And now I'm going to drag the icons into that second one there. Okay. So now this is getting to look more like what we want. We want this flex zone here, the base one, is holding the ability text and this other flex zone. And this flex zone is actually holding all three icons and it's trying to distribute them horizontally, which is perfect. So I'm just going to make that a little bigger. I'm going to get rid of that border again. That's looking more like what we want. And now because we have an auto size, an auto height on this ability, it should all be responsive together. So let me just turn this guy off so we can see what's going on here. Now, if I add more text in here, you can see it all grows together as the one package because this one, this base flex zone is trying to distribute all the other child zones inside it, including this flex one. So this was just a quick demo, but hopefully it gives you an idea of the kinds of scenarios that flex containers are really helpful for. It lets you create responsive card layouts that um, are really easy to maintain and easy to use. Another thing to be aware of is that if you're in Google Sheets and you have auto show, this one here, show zone, but if I've got this auto show hide setting on by default, then in if I have a cell in the table, say this image where there's no data, so there's no image there, it'll actually, it will actually do this. And so that works really well with flex containers so that you can have super simple data, but your card responds accordingly. Let me know how you go with it. Best of luck and happy designing.